I'm John Hom. I play guitar and vocals in Agaloc, and this is Whiskey Soda TV. I am uh, Ebiga of Donenreich, and you're watching Whiskey Soda TV. So we are here with John and Eviga, John of Agalog, Eviga of Donenreich in Berlin playing the K17 tonight. Um, John, um, we emailed back and forth and you already told me that uh, there's a history with you and, and the Donenreich that goes back all the way to 1997. So could you just tell us what's this history? Well, um, I was living in New Hampshire and we had just put out the the 97 demo for Agaloc. Um, this was in 97. And I got a flyer for the Donorike demo, and so I wrote him. And we traded demos, and uh, later on we traded albums, and just sort of kept in contact off and on through the years. And each band sort of seemed to have grown together in, in this sort of in, um, way throughout the years. And then now here we're like touring with each other. And so it's just a really nice, um, gradual history that's that's yeah that's gone through the years okay. yeah it's, it's it's a short story but it, is, okay. it has roots all that date back all the way then so we're, we're really quite honored to actually be touring with such a great band have you ever talked about uh, maybe collaborating on music uh, in the future Yes, we have. Uh, just today, we talked about doing something together. But, you know, time will tell uh, which projects are to be or are possible to be uh, done together. But we will. I hope so, yeah. Uh, John, uh, could you tell me and ask what makes Stonenreich an outstanding band? Just incredibly unique um, mixture of folk and black metal, but done in a way that isn't, I guess, stupid. You know what I mean? It's it's not like happy folk, you know, metal. It's 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 really dignified, emotional uh, music that that pulls from various influences, from classical to to folk to, as I see it, just like natural darkness, you know. And it's just, it's very unique. I've never, I don't think there's another band I've heard that's similar in that way. And, yeah. <laughs> okay, and obviously, Aviga, uh, what are your thoughts on, on, on Agalog? Well, I think they are uh, very authentic. Um, and it's it's always great to, to watch them playing live because it's that uh, intense and that passionate and um, actually to me they don't sound uh, very uh, American it's uh, very um, deep and uh, yeah passionate kind of music and I really really think highly of this band I know it's kind of a dull question generally because it gets asked a lot but especially with a band like Don and Wright that has a unique sound, absolutely, I would say. Uh, it's all the more interesting to know where the influences are uh, and which you took and then made something really new out of that. So, Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, you when you start, you always kind of look at other other bands for inspiration and you find certain ones that really, you know, touch you and really, really inspire you to create something interesting. But I mean, through the years, I think y you should evolve and find your own identity, you know, and not throw away those old influences, but develop something that's all your own. And I think now, especially with our last album and the next album, we've been trying more and more to, to create from the perspective of not having any in in influences at all, just write what comes from our, our hearts and our spirits rather than you know, listening to a record and being like, yeah, we want it to sound like this or that, but actually just, just do it, you know, and whatever comes out, comes out. And I think that is really the mark of, of an, of an original, um, style is when you can, 
you know, pull from your from your own, you know, self and and not only musical influences but like natural influ- influences and like we draw a lot of influences from film and art and uh, and other other forms of art form or than music. So um, yeah, that's you know. But I I still of course love the older records. I love old Godspeed, the Black Emperor records. You know, I I never tire of that stuff. And there are definitely some some newer bands that I really like, you know, that I'm always searching the underground for some really true and I, bands that have a strong identity and things like that. So, yeah. <laughs> um, it's pretty much the same with us. Um, our artistic expression has always been based on uh, in- intuition. And, um, <clears throat> of course, we're all influenced by many uh, bands or uh, artists and projects. And uh, for sure, one main influence was or is uh, Norwegian black metal, such as Ulva or uh, Quist or Gehenna. Um, but uh, uh, we've all be always been searching for uh, uh, authentic music. Uh, that uh, gives us the creeps and then inspires us. Um, yeah, classical music, not genre-based. I loved and I still love Tori Amos for her musical genius and um, yeah, yeah. I'm really interested in uh, in your thoughts on maybe not God, but the concept of divinity and spirituality and stuff like that because it, I think it plays a big part in your music and in your lyrics and I'm especially referring to uh, one line in, in one of Agalog's song um, which is one of my favorite songs and actually the song I heard first of you and in the shadow of our pale companion um, there's this line uh, if this grand panorama before my eyes is what you call God then God is not dead uh, which I just really like just for the words how it sounds, but uh, I mean it, it sounds really deep. Like uh, you put a lot of thought in that. So John, I'm wondering, uh, you're using actually the word God. Many bands avoid that word actually, or just use it in a very negative sense. Even uh, you used it here positively, and I'm just wondering what what is God to you? What does it mean to you? Well, from a from a pagan standpoint, it's there are many gods. You know, um, I think in that line I was referring to the god of nature, um, whereas in Bloodbirds I'm referring to the god of man, uh, you know, is as being a failure, you know, um, whereas the god of nature is creating, you know, a beautiful panorama, you know, that's endless and, and wondrous. I mean, that's really, my my point of view of god is, is it's more or less just a perspective, um, it's a human perspective on life. Um, in, in different forms and um, you know I take more of the, the the heathen approach to to that whole concept um, you know I don't really believe in some you know Christ figure or anything or whatever um, but rather just a, a spirit uh, in, in different sorts of spirits um, that you know like the spirit of the woods and the spirits of the sea and things like that so and that uh and that god is in in a way what you make it him to be or it to be you know um so yeah that's kind of where where i stand on that i mean i'm definitely not a christian and i don't subscribe to any sort of christian uh, views but sometimes um You know, so sometimes Christians actually have all right things to say, you know, if they if they aren't fanatical about it, you know. And that's the other thing is I believe that people should be free to believe in whatever the hell they want. But as soon as you mix, you know, extremism or I, with ideology and things like that, you know, it, 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 it's bad, whether it's Christian, uh, pagan or whatever. So, um, so yeah, it, I just – the short answer is that I take more of a heathen view. Uh, it's a very difficult question, I have to say. Um, in first place, I can uh, um, hint on 
the first lines of our of the of song eight of our last album. There are spoken lines, which uh, really get across my personal um, view on spiritual uh, contents. And uh, personally, I really believe in the immortality of uh, the human soul. Um, and Dornreich has always been trying to combine uh, the earthly contrasts we're all living in, you know. Uh, and uh, even nature itself is based on uh, big, big cycles of day and night and uh, winter and summer. And therefore, even in our music, we try to uh, get across uh, these cycles in an artistic way. In, uh, for example, uh, combining um, warmer southern acoustic guitars and uh, cold uh, distorted guitars, for example. Uh, uh, in my opinion, the instruments are uh, symbols for uh, natural powers. And uh, yeah. Um, so, what I'm wondering is. Um Do you feel um, hopeless when it comes to the future of, of mankind, to to our ways of living? Or are you maybe hopeful even now in, in our in our times with the current economic crisis, uh, which really shakes a lot of people and also um, kind of increased um, consciousness about uh, the environment? Um, do you believe that trend that it could actually get us around maybe on the right track or would you say no it's actually um, the way it's going it's it's, it's kind of hopeless and uh, humanity is going in the wrong direction maybe and this view on humankind being in a balanced relationship with nature it's it's a very romantic view Uh, we want to aspire it, but it it won't happen again because we have gone too far in another direction. So which question do you want me to answer? <laughs> um, well, I mean, sh yeah, I'm always hopeless when it comes to the future of mankind because I, I mean, mankind is a pr pretty hopeless creature. I mean, we're a very negative creature and uh, we destroy, I think, more than we create. And... Um, But I, I have no doubt that years after we've killed ourselves off, nature will be back. Nature, we, there's no way that we can destroy nature. Um, nature can destroy us and probably will if we don't do it ourselves. Um, but, I mean, after everything is gone and all that, the planet will renew and, you know. Uh, so with, with all that in mind, um, you know, I try to do my part um, in terms of, you know, you know, living, I guess, green, as they said, even though it's pretty much impossible. Um, you know, when you have a car, when you fly to Europe to go on tour, to <laughs> when you're on a, a bus, you know, using gasoline and things like that. Um, but, you know, that doesn't mean that I have to also be a slob and, and pollute, you know, With, with garbage and, and not recycle and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, I think in some ways mankind in certain areas, especially in America, is waking up a bit more and in some ways catching up with Europe because I've noticed that for years, you know, Germany has had a pretty strict recycling program, whereas America is just now getting on board. So, you know, I don't know if that really answers your questions, but, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll let him <laughs> take a shot. Um, I think um, uh, artisti artistic expression has to be critical for sure but uh, Donenreich has never been uh, hopeful in the end uh, every single album has a, a positive outlook uh, in the end um, but uh, I've always been trying to focus on the human individual because I think that uh, real change 
and development uh, relies on uh, individual uh, progress and um, uh, in my uh, opinion um, current systems uh, religions or political systems econ economic systems uh, seem to fail and uh, I guess it's time to to address oneself to uh, the human individual uh, on a very uh, archaic and uh, elemental level. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but thanks for that. And okay, after all this talk about uh, God and the future of mankind, I want to get back to maybe a little bit more profane topic and that is your music and what uh, you're uh, planning uh, on, on doing next. I know that uh, Don and Reich, uh, you already have a title for your next album, which will be Flammentrieb. Uh, a word I also found in the lyrics of your latest album, actually. So um, one question would be whether there's kind of a bigger concept behind that, behind the interesting uh, word and also then the question you know uh, how far is the process in terms of writing the songs recording and when the album will be out and maybe what direction it will be going into because your latest album was a mostly acoustic affair and what can the fans of Don and Reich expect from your next effort um, you're right the title word the Flammentriebe has uh, been a part of our last album uh, too and um, translated to English it means something like the urge of the flame uh, and uh, currently uh, the lyrics uh, are not written uh, they're not written yet uh, but the music is um, uh, quite finished um, and Uh, I guess this uh, very record will uh, surprise many people because it will be a very, very uh, dramatic and uh, rather uh, uh, fierce and uh, passionate, uh, I guess, uh, one can say, black metal album. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. And John, obviously I'm also interested in what will be next for Agalog. Um, your three albums uh, are all really different in in their style and their atmosphere they are creating. And so, and especially on your EPs you're putting out, uh, mostly strictly limited, so it's really hard to come by them. Uh, you're experimenting Uh, even more, uh, even going so far as to including electronic sounds and all that. Uh, so, what can we expect from the next Agalog album? Uh, and especially when can we expect it? Because the last time it was like a four year wait, and I think your friends are getting kind of needy right now to listen to more music. You can expect the unexpected. <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, um, well, we only have, well, I only have three songs that are fi finished in, in their skeletal forms, and I still have to uh, give that material to Don and Jason to sort of uh, work out their parts. Um, and then I have three more songs that are in the working stage, and they're more or less, it's like a jigsaw puzzle of riffs, you know, and I just have to figure out how to put it together. Um, but no, I ha we have definitely some grand ideas for the next record, and it's going to be completely different than our last record and the ones previous to it, but it's still going to have the elements that make Agaloc what it is. Um, I think it's probably going to be a bit more of a of a darker sort of black metal record, um, but at the same time, it's going to have dynamics and stuff like the others. Um, so we'll just have to see. And as far as when, um, I'm hoping by this time next year it will be out. Um, but, you know, like my, my goal right now is just to have it recorded this year. And then as far as the release and all that, that's up to the record label to decide. So, Great. Okay, thanks, John. Thanks, Aviga, for taking the time to answer the questions on Whiskey Soda TV. Take care. Bye.